guys, we made it to 2021. Can you believe it? It's already a new year. And that means a whole nother year of finding some really incredible things. I am really looking forward to spending more time with you guys this year. There were already two really crazy estate sales. Alice in Wonderland meets American Pickers and this is my life. They were ridiculous. So we are gonna go check out these ridiculous estate sales. And the very first one that I found was really cool. And it started right here in these people's driveway. There's this insane collection of these antique old cars. They had these old Ford Model Ts, but I mean, just like a graveyard for these antique classic cars. There were parts just thrown all over the place. I think the people that had this estate sale, I think that they were restoring these old cars and they like covered them in tarps to try to protect them. And it was a really, really interesting collection of old cars. Now, if I knew a lot about these old cars and car parts, this probably would have been a gold mine because these people had tons and tons of replacement car parts, things that aren't made anymore, but it was still really cool to see all of these old cars. I get inside the house and and they have all kinds of crazy stuff inside the house as well. One of the very first things I see is this cabinet full of vintage glassware. And one of the things that they have that I can spot right away is this vintage Baccarat crystal jam jar. And they only wanted $12 for it, which is a really good deal for one of these things. Now Baccarat is a French crystal company and their stuff is gonna be pretty expensive. Now this particular jar is super fancy because it would have been used for like jam or for mustard. I don't know about you, but when I need mustard, it does not come out of a three-piece hand-blown crystal jar from France. I'm sorry, but I don't know what kind of barbecue you guys are going to. Removing this without dropping that, taking this out and gently spreading my mustard on a hot dog, like, there, there are so many things that could go wrong here. These things go anywhere from 70 to $100 and you can find these in different sizes. They have different sizes for different condiments. This pattern is called Harcourt and they actually have different glasses, they have jars, they have vases. So you can find a lot of different things in this pattern, but one of their most popular things in this pattern are these condiment jars. They have a table with tons of different things spread out on top of it. And one of the things that I notice right away is there's this vintage walking stick just laid out on the table. I'm a huge fan of vintage walking sticks. One of the things that I like to do when I find a walking stick is I love to test the handle because sometimes they have hidden compartments or hidden swords inside. But I'm gonna go ahead and just like test the handle and see if I can find anything. And sure enough, I'm feeling it's a little bit loose. So I twist it a little bit more and then the top comes off. And you guys, there's a hidden compartment inside. This is actually super cool. And I love that I could show this to you guys. This is what would have been called a tippling cane and this would have been used for like alcohol so it's like a secret flask compartment that you could have put alcohol in it just seems kind of like a lot of work right you could probably just put a regular flask in your pocket. They're actually still making these. You can find modern versions of tippling canes and they've totally taken it to another level. You can see that this one only has the one little compartment at the top. In today's tippling cane market, you can find these on Amazon and they literally have five or six different flasks that just fill up the entire cane so that you can really stock up and have yourself a nice toasty little evening because you can probably fit an entire bottle of vodka inside of your walking stick. So, you know, $60 is a lot for something like this. They're gonna sell anywhere from 50 to 120. So I can't really justify spending 60 on it, but it's still really cool. This one looks like an older one and I'm glad I got to show that to you guys. I start making my way up these stairs, you guys, and then just all of the sudden, <laughs> the carpet goes from a normal color to this bright blue, insane carpet color. So I'm like, what's about to happen? There's this weird old rocking chair just kind of sitting in the middle of the room covered in pillows. and I know Notice two feet sticking out from under the pillows and I'm like, oh, this feels awkward. Let's just go see what they have over there and take off the pillows. I'm gonna like make my exit from this room and see what else I can find downstairs where things were weird, but not as creepy. And so I make my way into the kitchen and they actually had this incredible set of copper cookware and it was really inexpensive. So I was kind of excited about it. None of it looks like it was ever even used, but this is called Paul Revere Ware. And you'll notice that on the bottom, there's actually an 1801 right next to the maker's mark so you'll see it says Paul Revere and then up here at the top it says 1801 there's actually an entire story behind that 1801 I'm sure most of you guys have heard of Paul Revere 
But in the 1700s, he started working with silver and he started working with other metals like copper and brass. In 1801, he actually purchased land in Massachusetts that he used to store and operate these giant copper rolls to create these sheets of copper. Back in the 1700s, these copper sheets were really valuable. People would use them to line the bottom of ships to keep the ships from having worms and other animals eat the wood. There wasn't anywhere in the United States that you could get these, so the majority of these giant copper sheets were having to be imported from Europe. After Paul Revere died in the 1820s, his kids actually started the Revereware company, started making cookware. They did aluminum, they did stainless steel, they did copper. But what's really interesting is the copper cookware is incredibly collectible and it's super valuable. A lot of people didn't actually use it. They just bought it for decorative use or they just bought it to collect. So this was a really, really good set to find. They only wanted $5 per piece and a lot of these things go anywhere from $50 to $100 per pot. I was super excited to find this set at those prices. This estate sale was really interesting, but then I had one more that I wanted to check out and this one really took the cake as far as the crazy factor was concerned. So they had this little shed at the end of the driveway and so that's kind of where I wanted to start and I go inside I mean there's just stuff everywhere and I look up at the ceiling there's all of these hangers just kind of hanging out on the ceiling and they had this huge collection of vintage vacuums and vintage vacuum parts which was interesting because you know a lot of people don't really use these to decorate and they're not really super functional. So I'm surprised to find all of these old vacuums here like this. Some of these can be really valuable, but I'm not seeing any that are jumping out at me. So then I see this next thing that also is really interesting. This is a vintage Norwalk juicer. What's interesting about this is this is really old. This is probably from like the 50s or the 60s, but Norwalk juicers are really valuable. If you can find a newer model of Norwalk juicers, these things go for over a thousand dollars. I don't know how functional and how effective something like this is going to be from the 1950s, although it does have a very cool vintage look to it. So I noticed that there's these stairs that kind of go down and I'm like, all right, let's, uh, let's see what's going on. It's a little quirky, but we're going to check it out. And as I'm going down these stairs, I start noticing there's these mannequins, a lot of mannequins that are all just kind of like hanging out and um, doing different poses, wearing different things, but like, it's a lot of mannequins for a home environment, I feel. And I'm down in this like creepy basement by myself and these mannequins just keep showing up. There's like some vintage stuff sort of littered throughout, but I'm super distracted by everything else that's going on that I can't even look at anything that might be of any value. I'm just a little bit terrified. So I keep walking. Then I notice this other mannequin here. I mean, like, does this or does this not look a little bit like Kim Cattrall? Just mildly. Mildly Kim Cattrall-ish. And then I start going down this corridor. There's all kinds of Christmas stuff, but also not just Christmas stuff. Like, really creepy holiday stuff. When you look at old holiday pictures, sometimes you see kids sitting on the lap of a really creepy looking Santa or a really creepy looking Easter bunny. That's where all of this stuff was from. And so I'm kind of just wandering through slowly and I'm just like, the mannequins, what are, why? Why is his face melting? I can't imagine a store being like, but I'd like a mannequin whose face is melting. I'd like a melted looking man mannequin for our clothing display. He needs to have a melting face. I wanna go into the main house because I'm coping that this is just like a creepy basement situation and it's not an overall thing where the whole house is this way. But uh, I get into the house and the mannequins just go from melting faces to just a little bit more dressed up, a little bit more like well presented. The basement mannequins are not as fancy as the house mannequins. And the house mannequins get to wear fancy clothing and, and do a little bit more dramatic posing. Um, but also, did anybody notice this woman <laughs> sitting in this chair like there's just so many human figures surrounding me I totally didn't even see this woman sitting here until I went back watched the footage I'm like oh my gosh that was a real human being so I make my way into the back bedroom and they have again more tables just full of these little knickknacks and these figurines what I do see that is very interesting again just because you don't see these things very often and for some reason whoever owns this place really has a fondness for these 1940s and 1950s appliances. And so this thing here is actually super 
super cool. This is an old vintage portable washing machine and this probably would have been from the 1940s, uh, but you just don't see these things very often. He wants $50 for it and these things go probably for about $50. Sometimes you can maybe get like $70 for them, but it's really difficult to find a good customer for these old appliances because they're not something that you're really gonna use. And then the other thing that he has sitting over here, this is an old 1950s Westinghouse roaster and this thing is massive. It's huge and it actually looks like it's in really good condition. Like it's been kept very nice over the years. And again, it's just something you don't see very often. You could probably find one of these on eBay for 110, $150. So before I left, I did see this really incredible beer light. You guys, and this is a Schlitz beer light. This is a really, really cool one because this company made a lot of really incredible motion lights. So when you plug them in, it didn't just light up. It actually would do something. So they would have these lights that would create these amazing shadows on the wall or some of them would actually have clocks installed in them. Now this particular one he wants $100 for and it's kind of not in the best condition. The top's coming off, it's in pieces. If I could fix it, I could get a little bit more for it. I'd only go for about $150 to $200. So I offer him $50 for it because of the top coming off in my hands. So when you plug it in, this thing has a motor inside that spins around and it creates this really cool shadow effect on the top. And I was able to reconnect the top. So that was it, you guys. Those were the first finds of the new year. I was very, very happy with all of those and I was super excited to share them with you and show you guys these crazy estate sales. So I wanna hear from you guys. I wanna know what your new year's resolutions are. So one of my new year's resolutions is I'm actually starting a Facebook group for YouTube subscribers and other people that wanna go in. One of my all time favorite things is I get a ton of messages from you guys on my website and on Instagram where you send me photos of some of the things that you're finding and I wanted to create a place for people to also see those things and share those things. I'm gonna put the link for the group in the description of this video below so you're able to go in and find it and join it if that's something that you feel like would be helpful for you. I'm super excited to be going into 2021 with you all. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.